And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to try an Honoro Vera 2018 Merlot. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, to be honest, but uh, as long as I can drink it, I think it should be fine. I like a really good Merlot, and hopefully this is one. We're going to try it. We're going to pair it with some foods. I'm going to review it a little bit, and we're going to toast some birthdays and anniversaries. We're also going to learn a little bit about the grape tonight, the Merlot grape. And uh, this should be fun for all, for all of us. Uh, if you're just joining me uh, for the first time, this is drinkwithrick.com. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. We review wine. We just get in the chat. Have a good time. Drink with me. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drinking. And I'll see if I can get a hold of a bottle of it, and we'll try it out and review it. Uh, you can, of course, uh, watch here on Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, Live. We can, you can watch on the Facebook page at Drink with Rick. You can watch on YouTube at Drink with Rick. You can watch on Twitch. In Twitch, I'm Drink with Rick 1. Drink with Rick 1. For some reason, I couldn't get Drink with Rick. So I'm, I'm Drink with Rick 1. Uh, we're also on, you can watch live on Twitter as well because we're up through going through Periscope. You can also watch on our website directly from the website at drinkwithrick.com. Now, I don't have a chat going there, but if you click on the, uh, the actual uh, page that it's streaming from, there's a comment section below and you can leave me comments there and I will respond in kind. Uh, you can uh, also catch the podcast. It's at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday nights. Uh, the podcast version of the show goes up at 10 p.m. Eastern each Monday night uh, right on the nose and uh, you can uh, contact me through email at rick at savoyamedia.com. So send me an email, tell me uh, what you'd like to see me drinking, or tell me what I'm doing or not doing right. Oh, also, join in for the, um, for the giveaway, because we're going to be giving away a, a, a book, uh, you know, towards the end of the month or so, but I need some entries in here for that. So uh, you, might, you might win. I'll talk about that later. Anyway, uh, this is drinkwithrick.com, once again. And um, I'm glad you're here. Let's see who's in the chat. I, I've seen uh, Abney Friend 1 was in the chat. I hope you're still there, uh, Abney Friend 1. I, I had to refresh the chat room. Uh, let's see. I, I saw uh, Abney Friend 1 was in there earlier. I hope you're back. Uh, you have to chime in and say hi again because I had to refresh it because I, I had a network error coming back to me. Uh, on on Twitch, so I had to, to refresh the page. Apologize for that. Uh, we are up. Uh, looks like we're going on uh, Periscope. Things are a little spotty tonight. It's going. Things are going up and down a little bit. I'm hoping that uh, this is going to be a steady stream uh, on on some of the. Um, let's see. I've got. Uh, it's working on uh, YouTube, and it's kind of going up and down for me on Facebook. I hope you can see the things on Facebook. Uh, Twitch, I'm a little concerned about because it just kind of went went down a little while ago. I think I got it back up, but uh, it, at least on my end. And um, you know, I've got a little story about the the bandwidth here, but uh, I'll, I'll share that uh, maybe later on in the stream. Anyway, let's get to the wine tonight. We're going to be drinking this. This is called uh, this is an Honoro Vera. I believe that's how it's pronounced, Honoro Vera. Uh, it's Jamila wine. That means it's the the, the area where uh, where it was um, grown. The grapes uh, were harvested was in uh, Jamila in Spain. That's in that region of Spain. So uh, this is a Merlot. It's a Spanish Merlot. So this should be very very interesting. This wine is uh, in 2018, and I purchased it from Wine Store. One of my favorite places: WineStore-Online.com. But uh, it is available, widely available in a number of places. We're going to go take a, we're going to take a look at uh, where it's available, some of the places where it's available. Let me show you the back end of this wine. Let's, let's take a look at the back side. And I'll read the back side uh, real quick. Let's see what we have. This is a, um, oh, before we do, uh, Stephanie, Stephanie's joining us in the chat. Stephanie, it's great to see you in, in the chat. Uh, chime in, tell me how you're doing. And uh, stick around. We're going to have some fun and we're going to toast some birthdays and, and uh, just have a good time. So uh, join in. Uh, let's see the Honor of Era Merlot 2018. This is a Jum this is uh, from the uh, region of Jamila uh, in uh, 
in, in Spain, modeled by Bodegas Juan Gil. And uh, this is 14.5% alcohol in the 750 milliliter bottle. It is a red wine. There really isn't a whole lot on the back. You know, usually there's a little, you know, history or a little, you know, little, uh, a few other items on the back, like a promotional blurb and that sort of thing. But we, we really don't have this on this wine, so uh, it's it's pretty much a pretty much a straight, you know. Here's, here's what's in the bottle. It doesn't even tell us if it's 100% Merlot. Now, we're going to find out about that because Merlots, you know, there are a lot of blends out there. And a the majority of the wines that you buy in the supermarket or whatever, a lot of them are blends. And this one, uh, you know, you would expect a lot of the Merlots and a lot of the um, uh, cabs and things like that are, are blends. But uh, this one... Uh, this one may not be a blend. It might actually be pure Merlot. We're going to find out here in just a moment. Anyway, we're going to uh, let's look. Let's find out a little bit more about this wine. As a matter of fact, uh, I have seen it. Uh, I, I've got a little bit of information on this wine. I do do have some tasting notes, and I do, I do have some. Uh, I do have a sheet, a one sheet on it that I got from the uh, uh, vineyard, and. Uh, I do have some pricing. Now, I picked up this wine. I've got my pricing on this wine here. But I checked around online to get some pricing on it. And it's running, uh, the least expensive I saw this wine was $8.99 a bottle. That was from uh, Washington State. And uh, another place, International Wine Shop in Connecticut, $9.99 a bottle. Uh, Napa Cabs in California had it for $129.98 a case. And... Um, let me see if I can get my audio back here. There we go. And uh, let's see. A Spirit. Uh, that's in Minnesota. Uh, that was for $10.99 a bottle. Now, I I bought this at Wine Store, where I like to go, Wine Store in Blakeney. And I paid approximately, wait for it, I paid uh, $9.99 a bottle. For this for this bottle uh, honor of Merlot. Now it's not the least ex uh, expensive uh, wine that uh, that I purchased from there. I, I, I'm surprised it's not the least expensive price because uh, usually the the uh, at wine store the the prices are much much uh, better. But it's uh, it's not bad. It's still still a decent price. And I think I just lost our stream. Did we just lose our stream from? Uh, on Facebook again. Boy, Facebook has been really, really spotty tonight. Apologize for that. Looks like we've got a low frame rate here and uh, just not a really good connection tonight. So I apologize to everyone who's watching on Facebook or trying to. Uh, if you're having trouble watching on Facebook, you can s switch over to YouTube because uh, uh, it looks like it's going on just fine. Uh, well, <laughs> it looks like it, it uh, was going fine. <laughs> I don't know about tonight. It looks like it looks like bandwidth is just really really choked tonight. I don't know what's going on to be honest. Uh, bandwidth is just really choked. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening there. Anyway, uh, I did update. I really just recently updated this this uh, this program that I'm using uh, OBS, uh, and I think maybe we have a little bit of an issue with it. Might have to restart this show if uh, if things are not going. Or you know what I'll do is I'll just probably go ahead and, and finish the show. The show must go on. I'll finish the show and then I'll go ahead and and post it, uh, repost it later on Facebook. I apologize for that, folks. Uh, it's just not uh, you know, something's going on with the with this. I don't know. Uh, it might be on my end. It might actually be on my end. I'll have to check that out. Anyway, so. Let's go ahead and open this bottle. Now, normally I have my little wine corker thing, uh, my little uh, uh, corkscrew, mechanical cor corkscrew, but we don't need it because this is a screw cap tonight. So we're just going to do the screw cap, undo the screw cap, and we'll just go ahead and pour this in. I've got a, I've got my trusty Veneto Wine Lovers uh, aerator from the Veneto Wine Lovers set. And to port, I've got uh, my 
I have my uh, genuine Irish crystal Galway glass. Genuine Irish crystal. That was uh, a gift from uh, my employers, my bosses over by Two Way Radios. Now let's go ahead and pour a little bit of this wine in there and try it out and see how it's going, how it sounds tasting. We'll see how it works. Um, we'll let it breathe for a minute or two, and while it's breathing, let's uh, get the info on this wine. Once again, it's supposed to be, uh, it, now the producer is Ana Rivera. It is in Jamila, Spain, in that region. It's uh, supposed to be 100% Merlot. Now, unlike a lot of the blends that you, a lot of the Merlots that you get off the shelf in the store are actually blends, and usually somewhere between 78% and, 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 and up for Merlot, you, you know, usually a minimum of 70 percent or so and then blended with some other wines this one is 100 percent merlot so i'm looking forward to this i am and uh, this uh wine the, the vineyard the grapes come from 15 hectares or 37 acres of vineyards over 2200 uh, feet in elevation oriented to the north the vines are trained in the trellis system with a yield of four tons per hectare that's 1.7 tons per acre i'm reading off their their uh, their sheet here and the soils have a foot deep layer of chalky stones over a substrata of sandy nutrient poor soil now the soil has a lot to do with the with the grape with the integrity of the grape and and how it come turns out how it tastes uh, you know, on the vine, and then of course, uh, when it's further, uh, you know, prepared and, and, and made into wine, and uh, that that uh, you know affects it further. But a lot of the personality, if it's done well, if it's if if the wine is made well from the grape, it retains as much of the uh, original. Uh, flavor and integrity of the grape as possible. We'll see how this works out. We're going to try it, and then we're going to learn a little bit about the grape. So, and according to the sheet now, according to the sheet that I have here, it's 15% alcohol by volume. The bottle says 14.5%, and there might be a, a reason for that because, uh, you know, they, they want to, uh, as I've said so many times before, when you're looking at the, the uh, alcohol uh, the alcohol that's posted on the label, it's not always accurate. It's often, it's usually higher, considerably higher. But in some cases, uh, they don't necessarily want the alcohol to, to uh, they don't want it to look that high, so they'll post the lowest, the lowest end on that, on, on that scale for how much, you know, how much alcohol is in this wine. So that's why sometimes you will see the uh, the actual alcohol content uh, on, on some of these spec sheets and whatever considerably higher than what's on the bottle. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and try this wine. And just on the nose, yeah, a little little musky. And I smell the cherry and uh, on the nose. And uh, let's see, let's see what it tastes like. Hmm. This is a bit musky. Yeah, the cherry. Little little chocolatey. It's a chocolate. And um little mocha. Little mocha flavor in there. And uh hmm. has a nice finish. Soft tannins. The the tannins are not harsh. They're 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 soft, they're soft tannins. Some a little acidic, not too bad. But do you have any other information on this wine here? It's um, according to some of those sites that I've been to, it's supposed to, you're supposed to taste some blackberry and plum. I don't get, I don't really get any plum in this. Uh, I don't taste a lot of blackberry. It's just mostly cherry and uh, and a little hint of chocolate, and it's kind of oaky. Little pepper, I think a little little bit of a hint of pepper in there too. A hint of pepper. It's not it's not over uh, the um, cherry's not overpowering in this, but it's there, it's there, and it's it's kind of a kind of more of a bold taste. 
Uh, but it's it's light tannins, uh, kind of yeah, not a little on the light side for the tannins, but it's not, it's it's uh, it's good. Uh, and and I like a lot of tannins in my wine. Sometimes it's uh, fairly dry, fairly dry, but it's um, it's uh, just a little acidic. It is it is a uh, it's a little acidic. This should go pretty well with barbecue. I think, with the um, the the balance of the uh, of the acidity and the, and the tannins in the wine and and um, the sherry f the flavor a little bit, I think it should go okay. That the oakiness, the kind of the musty taste or musky taste to it, I guess you'd say, it should go pretty well with barbecue, and that's a good thing because I did not show you this yet. Tonight we have my wife has prepared a nice platter for me tonight. We have let me get back to the chat here just a moment. We have a nice little platter to, to do some tasting with. There is um, a barbecue beef brisket, and we have some barbecue chicken, smoked chicken, smoked barbecue chicken, smoked beef brisket. We have, it looks like a Colby Jack here, and a little bit of Gouda. This is not the Trader Joe's Gouda that I'm always raving about, but this is a, a, a Gouda cheese, and I've had it before, and it's a, it's a decent Gouda. A little cheddar cheese here. I think this, uh, I'm not really sure which brand it is, and a few crackers to clear the palate. Let's go ahead, before we uh, before I try this, pairing this with the food, let me check in uh, uh, Twitter because I had a, uh, uh, nothing going on there. Okay, Adam Friend 1 is there. Can you see me okay? I mean, is it is it working okay for you there? Because it was cutting in and out for me, and, and I don't know what's going on. It might be on my end, bandwidth-wise. Um, I hope that uh, I mean, from uh, my uh, streaming PC here, it, it looks okay. But I, I coming back, uh, it's a little spotty in, in some places. It's been a little bit rough, and it, it just might be the bandwidth. Uh, it could be uh, it could be a couple things. It might be some settings here that I have to, to adjust a little bit. But I don't want to bore you with all the technical tech with technical stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead and try this with uh, with the barbecue, the barbecue beef brisket. I'm looking forward to trying it with that. This is a great beef brisket. Mm. Really good brisket, by the way. That piece is not fatty. It's kind of lean. Mm. Really good. Good barbecue. Ah, I like that. Not bad. Not bad. It, it's, it's pretty good with the barbecue. This barbecue came from Midwood Smokehouse um, in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. We love to go to Midwood. Midwood I've raved about before. and We actually had, have had some Midwood food on here before to pair with wines in the past. They make this on the weekends. They do a beef rib that's about this long. It's like a foot long beef rib. And it is just, it's amazing. It's just falling off the bone tender. It's just, it's awesome. And they smoke this thing for like a week. And it's just, it's just awesome. But they only have a limit, they make a limited amount of it uh, all week. And they just, they just have it on the weekend. So they have it until they run out. When they run out, they run out. And that's it. Uh, but they quit doing it during the this uh, whole shut-in, the pandemic thing. They quit doing that and a few other things. So I wasn't able to have my beef, beef rib. But uh, the beef brisket is really, really good as well. In fact, I'm going to try another piece of it here. I'll try it with a little more wine. And we'll... Just because I can. <laughs> this is good brisket. Yeah, I like that. I like this. Now the chicken, the chicken is barbecue chicken. Let me clear my palate a little bit. Okay, the chicken is a smoked barbecue chicken, also from Midwood. But, um, you know, the, the thing is, I'm not sure about the chicken in the Merlot. Barbecue chicken. This might be go better with a Pinot, with a Pinot Noir, but it might still be good with this. The beef definitely would work with this, and it does. 
I'll give it a try. Mmm. Chicken's good too. It's a little bit on the sweet side, but it's good. Mmm. Let's try it with the wine. Not bad with the chicken. Not bad with the chicken. I like it better with the brisket. I like it better with the brisket. Let's try some of this with the... We'll try it with the uh, Gouda. Let's try it with the Gouda cheese. Hmm. And... Uh, Good with the Gouda. And, you know, this is, by the way, this is a medium body wine. I know that uh, I, I was going to mention that earlier. It's, uh, it, it looks from the lights here, it looks like it's really, really dark, as most of the wines do. But it's really more of a medium bodied wine. It's not that. And with Merlot, Merlot is kind of a dark grape, as you want to hear about in, in, in a, a few minutes. But uh, usually it produces some, some fairly dark wines. This one's not. I want to say that it's it's a Merlot, but it, it's not as uh, it's not the same complexion as, as some of the Merlots that I've had. It looks a little bit lighter than that. Let's try it with the uh, hmm, the Colby Jack. And this should be good. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay with the Colby. It's not fantastic. Um, I expect a little bit better with the Colby, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Let's try it with a little bit of the cheddar. Let's try the cheddar cheese. This is kind of a medium cheddar. Nice and creamy with the cheddar. It's not. That's pretty good. Nice and creamy with the cheddar. Okay. I like it. Okay. So I think it will it goes great with the barbecue brisket. Okay with the um, smoked tur uh, chicken. Um, not nah, a Colby. I don't know. But the um, the gouda it's good with and the ched I liked it with the cheddar. It was, it's pretty good with the cheddar. So uh, I'll clear the palate again. So that's, uh, it, with tasting, I think it would be fine with, uh, it probably would go fine with lamb, too. I think it would be pretty decent with lamb. Um, this would be a good wine for that, I think. So, let's check in with the chat again. Stephanie, you're still in the chat. I uh, hope you're still with us, and tell me how you're doing. Uh, let's see, anybody taking the poll? I put up a poll on, on Facebook asking if you liked, uh, if you prefer wet, red, white, or rosé wines. Um, let me know what you think. And Chris, it's good to see you. My good friend Chris uh, Kremitz us. And, um, and stick around. Stick around. Well, let's see what's going on in uh, Twitch. Uh, Admi Friend 1, uh, you know, I, hope, I hope you're still there. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with uh, the streams tonight. And it might just be bandwidth everywhere because, you know, everyone's at home. Everyone's using up the bandwidth. I have a pretty good uh, idea that just about everybody... Uh, on our block is is probably at home maxing out our bandwidth on on our cable so uh, uh, it's, it could be you know the, the difference between and I had this discussion with a friend of mine earlier this uh, this week and he was contemplating switching over his internet service and maybe getting faster internet and he was talking about we were talking about the difference between DSL and, and cable and, and fiber and satellite and that sort of thing and um, we were talking about the cable, and I told him, well, the thing is with the cable is that you, the cable uh, internet is not really a dedicated line. You're kind of on a giant network with, with everyone else, so it's going to fluctuate depending on, your bandwidth is going to fluctuate depending on how many people are on your street are actually uh, utilizing uh, that that uh, uh, cable line at any particular time. So it's like two or three in the morning. Nobody's on. You'll great. You'll get great speeds in the you know in in the morning or if everybody's working from home the middle of the day. Uh, they're, they're not going to be so good. 
you know, six o'clock, uh, everybody gets home. Those who are working uh, out and about get home, and it's going to be in early in the evening when everybody's out surfing the net or watching Netflix or whatever whatever they're doing, and it's really going to clog it further. So. Uh, we, we currently have cable right now. We're looking to switching out to have more of a dedicated line and improve this bandwidth. But, uh, yeah, it was an interesting story about that. <laughs> uh, but, but I'm not going to go right there right now. Let's, uh, for the time being, let's learn a little bit about this grape because I think you'll find this grape very interesting. We've been tasting Merlot. We've been, uh, pairing it with foods, but let's find out what this grape is all about. What is a Merlot grape? And I know there's a little bit of, uh, a little legend to it, a little uh, uh, recent, more recent legend to it, you know, the, and, and I'm not going to go into the movies where, uh, you know, um, sideways. <laughs> but, uh, but look, the, the Merlot is a, a, a grape that's kind of underrated. It's been kind of underrated, I think, in, in a lot of ways, particularly recently. But uh, let's learn about uh, the Merlot grape. Now let's uh, make sure I'm still connected to the Internet here myself before we do. Yeah, we are. Let's learn a little bit about the Merlot grape. And I'm going to pull some of this up from Wikipedia. That, that way I can, I can read through some of this. Uh, but I have some notes on it on Merlot. Let's find out about the Merlot grape. Very interesting history with this grape. Merlot's a, a kind of a, it's a dark blue colored grape and it's uh, very, not not super dark, but it's it's darker than some other grapes. And it's used uh, for both blends and, and for varietal wine. You know, varietal wine is the actual, uh, you know, 100% Merlot grape. And so this is a variety. What we're drinking tonight is a varietal, and uh, the um, the blends. I mentioned the blends earlier. That uh, oftentimes in the supermarket you'll see a lot of grapes, you know, or excuse me, a lot of wines blended with Merlot and two or three other grapes. This was 100%. So it's used in both ways. Uh, Merlot. The name Merlot came from a black bird, a little black bird. They used to uh, eat the grapes. They used to feed on the grapes. And it really came, uh, from, from what I understand, it came from, um, let's see, I think the name of the bird was uh, Merle. I think Merle. Merle, Mer, Merle, Merle. It was a French name. But it was for a little black bird. And uh, it's, apparently the, the bird used to eat the grape a lot, so they, they named the grape Merlot. That's that's the legend anyway. Uh, anyway, the grape was uh, first recorded in Italy. Um, it was first uh, uh, in 1855 as uh, Bordeaux, Bordeaux, and it was uh, that that was how they knew the grape in 1855 when it was in Italy. Now I'd been in Italy for a little while, but it was first recorded there uh, as that name. The uh, grape began to increase in popularity, or the wine began to increase in popularity. Now, the, the Merlot's been around for quite a, a while, and uh, it's one of the primary grapes used in Bordeaux wine, which is uh, could be why uh, Italy in Italy they called it Bordeaux. But uh, it's one of the most popular red wine varietals in, in many places around the world. And because of this, it's become one of the world's most planted grapes. Its popularity began to increase in the U.S. during the 1990s. Uh, the early 90s, it was uh, it, it became kind of an international style, you know, fl uh, that was favored by a lot of lot of regions, and it. It became, I guess, kind of a, a how do you say, a, a thing to to drink in the U.S. around the 1990s. Kind of became in vogue, I guess that's the word I'm looking for, uh, around the 90s. It's, uh, it's related to the Cabernet Franc, the Carmenere, 
the Malbec and the Cabernet Sauvignon. It's, it, it, they did some DNA testing on this grape, and they found that the grape was very, very uh, similar. It had, it had a, it could trace its history back to these grapes. So it, it actually is, yeah, I mean, believe it or not, you know, and I didn't really, I didn't really know this that much. It, I know they do DNA testing to find out what our, our own lineage is as humans, our, our heritage, but, and they do that with animals to find out what animals relate to other animals and kind of their, you know, lineage of certain uh, animals, dogs, whatever, cats. Uh, I've heard about that, but I really didn't know they did this with grapes. So that was kind of new, uh, new to me when I first learned about it. Uh, apparently, they can uh, they do a little DNA testing to kind of trace the grape back to to its origins and see what other grapes are related to this grape. And uh, that's what they that's what they t discovered about the Merlot grape is that it's related to the Cabernet Franc. They're coming in here, the uh, Malbec and the Cabernet Sauvignon, the cab grape. It's, uh, I, I think they, they learned about it somewhere around the 2000s, and they started sampling this from uh, vines grown in, in an abandoned vineyard in uh, San Ciliac in Brittany, and uh, that's how they did, the D, they did the DNA analysis from there and figured out this great, there's some vines that they found in the Banyan Vineyard there that was shown to be the mother of Merlot, so to speak. I don't know how true that is. Like I said, I'm reading this on Wikipedia, right? <laughs> so uh, so other, through the years, it's discovered it, uh, well, through the years, they, they've uh, they spawned a, a color mutation that uh, with a pink skin variety known as a Merlot Gris. Um, but Unlike the relationship between the Grenache Noir and the Grenache Blanc, uh, or the Pinot Noir and the Pinot Blanc, the variety that is known as the Merlot uh, Blanc is not a color mutation, but rather an offspring, a, a, a child variety of, of the Merlot uh, crossing with another another one. Uh, I think it's called a Folle Blanc. I think that's what it is. So... Um, The berries are dark blue, as I mentioned earlier, and they grow in clusters of loose bunches. That's how you identify the grape. The Merlot the grape generally tends to grow in, it grows best in a cold soil or clay. It can, it's grown in a lot of regions. This is a very, very widely grown grape, but it's, it, it grows best in cold soil or clay. But it, it is also grown in some warmer regions. The, uh, this is, as I mentioned before, it's one of the most widely planted grape varieties in the world uh, today. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. You know, I, I uh, wanted to take another swig of this wine because I'm starting to want to have a little more Merlot before we go any further. Very decent wine. So Merlot is the most commonly grown grape variety in France, um, but it's it's also grown in, in some of the places where it's grown. And I guess I'm going to have to pull this up again. Um, let me check the chat here for just a moment because I, I missed the chat here for a minute. What's going on in the chat? Nothing going on. On um, okay, kind of quiet out there tonight. Oh, Sharon's joined us in the chat. I'm sorry, I almost missed that. Sharon, it's great to see you. Good to see you in the chat. Uh, and and uh, it might be Sharon or Kathy, uh, my cousins. Uh, could be both of them. I'm not sure. It says, hello again, cousin. We had chicken cacciatore with our Cabernet tonight. Okay, so it is Kathy. It's great to see you, Kathy. So you had kitch, uh, chicken. You know, I never could say that, right? Kitchen cacciatore. Kid, <laughs> chicken. Sometimes it just wicks my merds up. And I haven't had that much wine. <laughs> uh, so you had chicken cacciatore with our Cabernet tonight. That's actually, I think that's actually a pretty good, uh, how did you like it, by the way? Did it, did it uh, was it a good blend? Uh, a good pairing for those two? Uh, I think it would be. I think it would be um, with the Cab. The Cab's a pretty decent wine for that. And it's a rather versatile wine for those, those, uh, types, of, those types of foods. 
anyway, uh, where were we? Okay, getting back to the the grape here for just a moment. Well, let me go back to that for a minute. So as I was saying, it's grown in France and a lot of regions in France. It's grown in Italy. It's grown in Algeria, California, Washington State, uh, of, of not Washington, D.C., but Washington State, and Virginia. So three. It's, a, it's grown extensively in the U.S. Like I said, it's one of the most popular grapes um, uh, in the world. So it's grown in California, Washington, Virginia. It's grown in a lot of places in California. There are a lot of uh, vineyards in California that grow Merlot. Uh, it's grown in Romania, Australia, Slovenia, Mexico, Israel, Turkey, Malta, and Cyprus. It's grown, in, and it's grown in some other countries too. I, I just kind of ran out of room to list all the. I just couldn't list all of the countries where where it's grown there. But it's grown in all those places. And um, the Merlot wine, uh, as a general rule, it develops a soft, velvety wine with plum, blueberry, black, and red fruits. Now, I was not tasting blueberry in here. I wasn't tasting blueberry in mine. I was not tasting uh, the black fruits. I tasted red fruits. Uh, but uh, and, and I was trying to taste the plum, but I didn't really catch that. But I definitely had the strong. I definitely had the strong cherry, and uh, it was it was kind of oaky. But I, I I tasted a little bit of a hint of chocolate, and uh, I think there was. Uh, I didn't taste the plum though. Might be a hint of it in there. I think after I've cleared my palette there. It might be a little hint of plum. Tim's in the chat. It's great to see you, Tim. How are you and your family doing, your daughter? Um, Tim says, hi, Rick, and right back at you, Tim. Glad you're here. Glad you're with us. And um, anyway, I, I hope everyone learned something about the grape. I learned a few things about the Merlot grape. Of course, of course I, I knew some of this before because uh, Merlot is one of my favorite wines. So I've done a little bit of studying on Merlot in the past, but um, I did learn a couple of things about the grape as far as its lineage was concerned. Uh, I did not know that, that uh, they were doing DNA testing to, to find out, to really trace where these grapes came from, but I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. Um, a good, good use of DNA testing, I, I suppose. So um, let's see. We, what's next on the list? Oh, we're going to do some birthdays. Uh, how's everybody, is everybody can still he, see and hear me okay uh, on all these? Uh, Twitch is, uh, I don't know what's going on, and I'm going to have to, uh, once again, bandwidth issues, I think, tonight. Tim Bartlett says, uh, Tim says it was Norris's favorite. Tim, uh, yes, uh, Norris did enjoy a good Merlot. I, 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 do, I do recall that. I think I do recall he mentioned it. And you know what? I, I don't want to say this, really, but uh, it, it's possible it's possible that might be one of the reasons why I like this because um, Norris Norris Richel, who passed away a couple of years ago, he was uh, uh, our boss, the general manager at WFL for many years, and um, a, a bit of a mentor for many. He was he was kind of a father figure for for some of us, and um, I saw him as as uh, I, he was someone I, I really really respected. He was a great guy, and um, he and his wife both were, were great people. And, um, and Norris uh, was very good to me. He was very good to all of us, but he was, he was very good to me. And uh, I do recall that, uh, yeah, maybe, because he did influence me in a couple of ways. He influenced me in a couple of things. And uh, maybe, maybe subliminal, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe somehow that, that influenced my, my taste in, in wine as well. It, it could have been. It could have been. Thanks for pointing that out, Tim. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, I do recall something about uh, Norris favoring Merlot. Anyway, let's get where it's time for birthdays, right? Let's get to the birthdays. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet tonight because we're we're having these bandwidth issues and everything, and and I'm I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, let's see the birthdays. We've got some birthdays tonight. Let's go. Uh, straight to that. First of all, for birthdays. Uh, I want to say a uh, very happy birthday to my good friend Glenn. My first, my first, my, my 
Maybe I've had too much of this. My good friend, Glenn. Glenn Hebert. Glenn the Geek. Glenn's birthday uh, was yesterday. And uh, now Glenn does, he is a founder of the Horse Radio Network, HRN, the Horse Radio Network. He's a longtime podcaster, as I am. And uh, he uh, put together a whole network. He, he, when he first started doing his podcast, it was like, oh, a podcast about horses? Well, he started one, and then it went on and on. It just built it up, and now he's got a whole network that, who knew? A whole network devo- devoted to horses. And um, very, very popular, too, and he's done very, very well with it. Uh, Glenn's a friend of mine, and uh, I want to say happy birthday to you, Glenn. And that's, uh, congratulations on uh, all of your successes as well. But happy birthday. And you know I'll toast you again because we only have a couple of birthdays to toast this week. Tim, anybody you know having a birthday coming up, I'll toast them as well. <laughs> um, I'll toast Glenn again. In the, uh, in, you know, in the meantime, Glenn the Geek, here's to you. Happy birthday. And um, someone else, another uh, friend of mine, she's the mother of, of someone who um, is a really good friend of mine to go way back. I haven't actually seen him in person in a long time, but we're, we're still friends on Facebook. But um, when I was growing up, he was one of my childhood friends that, uh, um, really cool guy, just a really cool guy, um, Jack, my good friend Jack, Jack Miller. And uh, his mom, Roberta Miller, her birthday was uh, Thursday, the, the, uh, right? Yeah, it was the, the 23rd. So here's to uh, Roberta. Happy birthday. In fact, I'll toast you again. Happy birthday, Roberta. And she's um, she's also the um, mother of, um, of Stephanie. And, um, oh, wait a minute. What have we got here? I'm, uh, no, I'm not dripping. It kind of looked like I was dripping. I wasn't. Uh, and uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. She's also the mother of, of Stephanie and Cheryl. And I want to give them a shout out to them. All old friends of ours. Well, way, way back. Happy birthday, Roberta. Anyway, uh, what do we have? That's actually all I have for birthdays. Anybody else know there's a birthday coming up here? I, I've got to do some more toasting. And, um, uh, I don't have I only have two birthdays to toast so far unless I miss miss one somewhere but I, I don't think I did anyway um, anyone know let's see uh, Sharon uh, Kathy anyone's birthday coming up here <laughs> I'm not a birthday to toast can you believe that let's check Twitch any friend one any birthdays you know of coming up <laughs> that uh, that I can toast. I don't have any anniversaries this week, so to speak. Although I did, I know, uh, uh, about a week or so ago, it was my friend Dave Jackson's 15th anniversary podcasting. I could dose that again. Uh, he's been a podcaster uh, for, for about a year longer than me. And uh, here's to Dave. There's a happy, happy anniversary. Congratulations. I think that's got it for the birthdays. I know what we can do. We can toast the national days. Now, my good friend uh, Marlo isn't is, isn't with us tonight. I don't think, but uh, I don't think he'd mind us toasting the national days on the nationaldaycalendar.com. And by the way, I think there are only just a few of those calendars left. So if you want one, go to nationaldaycalendar.com and pick one up. They're great. We have one on our wall. We gave one away um, during the holidays here on the wine stream. And um, let's see that. Uh, and I don't get paid for this, okay? I don't get paid for, for, for I'm just giving them a shout out. But I, I like the National Day calendar. It's a, great, it's, a, it's a great thing. And it's fun to toast the National Days. We do have some National Days here for today, which is uh, April 25th. April 25th. Uh, and you know, it's funny. It's, it's coincidentally that, that we were talking about DNA, right? Uh, DNA in, in the Merlot grape earlier. Because today is National DNA Day. Who knew? National DNA Day. Okay, I'll drink the National DNA Day. I have some DNA. Uh, we all have DNA, right? <laughs> National DNA Day. 
Okay. It's also, I'm going to run through these real quick because uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of running running short on time here tonight. And I promised my lovely wife, Chi, we would, we would cut out early. National East Meets West Day. I'm not sure what that's about, but uh, National East Meets West Day. National, National Hug a Plumber Day. National Hug a Plumber Day. Um, no, I respect plumbers. I really, they, they work hard. And uh, what they do, I am terrible at, at plumbing, so that's why I call a plumber. Learn the hard way to not try to do it myself and call a plumber. National hug. But I don't think I'd go as far as to hug them, especially these days. You're not supposed to be hugging each other during this during this pandemic, right? So a national hug at Plumber Day, I think we'll, uh, yeah, you can toast that one. That's, that's just fine. National Telephone Day. It's National Telephone Day. It's also National Zucchini Bread Day. Um, I, you know, I like zucchini, and I like fried zucchini and, and uh, steamed zucchini, but I, I don't know if I like zucchini bread too much. I think I've had it once. I don't remember much about it. Uh, National Kiss of Hope Day, which is the last Saturday in April. National Pool Opening Day, Pool Opening Day, the last Saturday in April. National Rebuilding Day, last Saturday in April. We have a lot of rebuilding in this country to do when we we, we get out of this thing because I mean it's just been devastating for everybody. Uh, National Sense of Smell Day, which is also the last Saturday in April. Now, this is very interesting, too, because, um, unfortunately, fortunately, I, I still have my sense of smell. Uh, and I, I'll tell you why. That uh, I just found out, well, actually, it's, it's, been, it's been spread around, it's been alluded to, that that's one of the symptoms or one of the possible symptoms of coronavirus. And as it turns out, I think uh, the CDC just the other day they they uh, added it to the list of official symptoms, the loss of of uh, taste and smell, so um, which is a scary thing. So hopefully we won't experience that. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, here's to national. What is it? National Smell Day. It's uh, National Sense of Smell Day. My I I value my sense. I value all my senses. My eyesight, especially my hearing, uh, you know, sense of touch, sense of taste, national smell day. You know, taste and smell, they're related. So here's a national sense of smell day. I will definitely drink to that. You know, um, I'm going to skip over here a couple of days because there are a couple of things that I, I want to uh, make a mention of that I did want to toast. And I think everyone can toast with me. National, unless you're a vegan, um, but, you know, why not? Um, April 27th is National Prime Rib Day. I will definitely drink to that. Prime Rib. Love Prime Rib. And I uh, haven't had it for a little while, but I, I do I do enjoy Prime Rib. Our local Harris Teeter up here on Thursdays, before this whole coronavirus thing hit, would do a... Uh, prime rib special where they they do prime rib up in a whole dinner a prime rib dinner and for uh i think it was uh 10 bucks you could you could get this whole big prime rib dinner it was great with all the fixings and you know the, the veggies and uh um uh, what was they have in there there was the uh they, they had a lot of stuff in there with the prime rib and uh it, it was great i loved it we haven't had that for quite a while because they quit doing that, I guess. Um, but uh, National Prime Rib Day. Here's National Prime Rib Day. Mm. And uh, April 28th is National Blueberry Pie Day. I love blueberry pie. You like blueberry pie? I love blueberry pie. Here's a National Blueberry Pie Day. And uh, National Superhero Day. Who's your favorite superhero? Superman, Batman, Aquaman, uh, Mediocre Man, I don't know. Um, who's your favorite superhero? And there's Workers Memorial Day on the 28th. But um, on um, April 30th, that's uh, last day of this month, I want to make a special toast for, uh, there are a lot of days here on April 30th, but... There is one that is special. 
National Bugs Bunny Day. Don't laugh. I love Bugs Bunny. I am not a I am not a celebrity hound by any sense of the word, but I love Bugs Bunny. I grew up on Bugs Bunny. And well not literally on Bugs Bunny. Um I that would have hurt. <laughs> I uh I grew up on Bugs Bunny and the Mickey Mouse and, and all those. But you know, the Disney characters, I like the Disney characters, but I tell you what, it was the Warner characters that really, really warmed the cockles of my heart. I mean, really. Um, the Disney characters were okay, but Warner Brothers characters, Bugs and Daffy and, and um, you know, Foghorn Leghorn and all those guys, uh, it was, it was, it was uh, yeah, it brings back a lot of good memories. Bugs Bunny, always like Bugs Bunny. I do not like what they've done to Bugs Bunny over, over the last a decade or two where they kind of modernized him so much that he just kind of lost the original, uh, the original bugs, you know, the persona that was the original bugs. Uh, I, th I understand, I think from what I've heard that they're bringing Looney Tunes back, I think somewhere on HBO or somewhere. And, uh, it looks like they're all new, all new cartoons. And, uh, it looks like, it looks promising because it looks like they've gone back to the, um, Tex Avery, um, and, or, or not, well, I like the Chuck Jones era too, um, but uh, the Tex Avery era in, 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 of cartoons and, and um, revived some of that. We'll see, we'll see. I don't subscribe to HBO, but I'll see if I can catch the cartoons somewhere and take a look. But here's the National Bugs Bunny Day. I'll toast a cartoon character. Why not? Anyway, I think that does it for the National Days tonight. Of course, if you can, you can look at all the National Days, the nationaldaycalendar.com. And uh, let's see, Sherrod uh, or Kathy says, hello again. And oh, I read that one already. Okay. <laughs> my lovely wife, Chi, has joined us in the chat. And my cousin, Pete, has joined us in the chat. Good to see you both there. And tell me how you're doing. And uh, Pete, how's it Connie doing? And Denise, and how's yourself? I hope everyone's doing well. My Aunt Connie has a birthday coming up. It's not until July, but, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll, 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 uh, we'll uh, look at uh, all this in July and, and, uh, and toast her then. Uh, she's going to be 103 years old. That's not very far away. I think she'll do that. She, I think she'll do it. I think she'll do, make 103. That would be kind of cool. 103 years old. She's 102 currently. I should toast her just for that, right? Here's Stan and Connie, 102 years old. And she still gets in the kitchen. Amazing, amazing person. So, that's got it for the birthdays and national days. What else do we have? Oh, I've got a quick thing about um, the emergency radios. You know, it's I. Uh, uh, as you know, I work for ByTwoWayRadios.com, and I have been, and I apologize if I haven't been on Facebook that much this weekend. I've, I've had to do a lot of catching up uh, last night and to, today on Facebook because, um, uh, not that I'm tied down to Facebook or anything, but it's uh, catching up with all my friends there and messages that were left for me and, and that sort of thing. Uh, basically because I, I, I've had my my head in my work. I've had my nose to the grindstone, so to speak, this week. Uh, just, a, just a really, uh, just a lot of hours at work. Even though I'm working from home, I've been just been putting a lot of hours because we're uh, uh, just got a, a lot of projects going on. But uh, one thing that that uh, was actually pretty interesting is that we had a huge uptick when this when this. Uh, uh, coronavirus hit, we had a huge uptick in um, sales of weather radios. And we knew that that was coming because we're considered, our business is considered a, a, an essential business because we, we do radio communications and a lot of, a lot of people, uh, a lot of services rely on radio communications. Uh, everybody from first responders, police, fire, and, the, and medics, that kind of thing, to to businesses, you know, a lot of local businesses are doing curbside service now and, and using radios back and forth to be able to coordinate that. And a lot of people at home are, are, are using radios for, uh, for social distancing and things like that. It's coming quite handy. 
uh, people are, are discovering. But the one thing that I, it didn't really occur to me was weather radios. And there's an uptick in weather sales of weather radios. And the one reason is because, um, you know, of course, we're entering the season, the spring season, where you really kind of need to have a weather radio, tornadoes and storms and things like that. Like we need something else going on right now, right? We've got this shut-in going on right now, this national shut-in, and, and uh, like we really need uh, you know, storms and dis- other disasters, but we've already had a few. You know, Mississippi got hit uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then six people killed in tornadoes and stuff. And we had kind of a scare here last week where we had that same storm that came through um, uh, the end of that week, and um, I stayed up all night because uh, they were talking about possible tornadoes hitting, and um, so I had a little room prepared downstairs, our kind of our what we'd call our safe room, uh, the only room in the house that we could go to in case something happened. And I, I brought all my radios with me. We brought a lot of emergency gear, and we had it sitting in the room ready just in case. But I stayed up all night because of the weather, tornado warnings, the weather watches, and things like that. And, and I thought, well, you know, a lot of these things happen when people are asleep. So if, if something hits when people are asleep, you, you never know, you're gonna, you know, you'll never know it. So I stayed up watching the weather reports and just listening for our weather radio because we, we have weather radios in the house, and they're set uh, to go off. The alarms go off whenever there is a, a warning that comes through. And so uh, we always prepare. Now, uh, we had, uh, it did w- go off a couple of times for warnings earlier in the evening, but fortunately we did not get a tornado here this, at this point, so we were, we were okay. But uh, a lot of people around us got uh, hit with some, some bad uh, weather, bad storms. Uh, the, the storms came through, but uh, some of our neighbors had to do some cleanup in, in the morning, and, and uh, uh, we didn't lose anything, fortunately, but uh, we could have. It could have been worse. But uh, it drives some of the importance of weather radios. But I was like, I'm thinking, well, we're already shut in due to this pandemic. It's like this is all we need. But a lot of people are realizing this. Plus, I did not know this but uh, before, and I should have. But the uh, one of the emergency uh, uh, weather or one of the emergency notifications that goes out uh, is related to pandemics. So, of course, you know, we're, we're in this pandemic right now and uh, you know people are buying up some of these weather radios because they want to stay informed during the pandemic in case there's an, uh, some other uh, state emergency or, or local emergency so uh, because of this we've had a, a huge uptick in weather we're actually sold out of these I've, I've got one of these I've had it for 10 years this XT511 radio and it's an all-in-one with a, a light and a a crank and, and about four or five different forms of, of power. And uh, we've used this. This has come in handy a number of times. We've had power outages. It's come in very handy in a couple of storms. So it's, and it's also a GMRS two-way radio. So it's actually a base station radio. This is an XT511 base station radio. So if you have other radios like this one, this, this radio will talk to it, and that will talk back. So it's a really cool thing to have. Anyway, so... Uh, we've, uh, we're have we out of them at the moment. I think we're getting some more in. But we have a lot of other radios. And, and if you need a weather radio, uh, you know, of course, that you have. My office, my boss has authorized me to give you this promo code for a 5% discount if you use Wine Show. That's W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W. So if you use the promo code Wine Show uh, when you check out at buy2wayradios.com, that's buy2wayradios.com, purchase a weather radio, or anything. You can actually purchase a radio, uh, any kind of a radio, weather radio, marine radio, GMRS, FRS radio, business radios, if you have a business, um, marine, you know, marine radios, airband radios, uh, that, that we, we have all kinds of radios, so, and, and accessories, so they're good, for, it's good for all of that, so uh, wineshow.com. Uh, is the promo code to use to get 5% off of your order. And uh, there is one more thing I want to mention. We are doing also, we are doing a giveaway for the for the month. I want to mention that real quick. And let me see if we can find it. <laughs> I've got, I lost where I was here. Uh, here we go. Um... Uh, 
There we go. We're doing a giveaway for this book, Start Ugly. My good friend Chris Kremitzos wrote this book uh, last year, and um, he did something rather unique um, this past week. And, of course, we do this on Saturday night, so we're not up during the week, so I couldn't give this to you during the week. But just for the week, uh, Monday through Friday, he, uh, he was giving away copies of the Kindle version for free. So you can go up there to Amazon and you can get the copy of the Kindle version for free um, of this book, Start Ugly. And it's a great book. I've done a review on it in the past and I've talked about it many times before. And we are also currently doing a promotion on this book. And uh, if you, basically the promotion is, uh, and of course it, it, the, the, the free Kindle version is, is done, but you can... Uh, let me find out where I what I did with that. <laughs> Here we go. If you e if you email me at drinkwithrick.com, if you uh, rick at savoyamedia.com, email me and tell me what idea, project, or dream do you have but have put off starting or completing for one reason or another. Do you have an idea? Have a project? Anything that you've wanted to do, always wanted to do, but you put it off because everything has to the stars have to align perfectly or Everything just has to be just right for me to start this, a business, whatever it is, any kind of a project. Um, this book is, a, is, is about um, showing you how to kind of um, just go ahead and start. It, it, it tells you just go ahead and start. Don't, uh, don't worry about that it's not perfect. Don't worry that everything has to be just right. Just start it and then just, just do it as you go along. Just perfect it as you go along and it explains that in a nice little story. Uh, which is uh, uh, an example uh, of of how it should uh, should work. Anyway, this is a great book, and I highly recommend it. We are giving away a copy. If you go to uh, if you email me Rick at SavoyaMedia.com, it's Rick at SavoyaMedia.com, and uh, I will uh, uh, next month I will go ahead and pull a winner, and I will send the winner a copy of Start Ugly. Anyway, so uh, that thing, I think that's kind of got it for tonight. There is one more thing I want to do, and that is I need to play this PSA for you. It's a PSA uh, that about the coronavirus. I played it before, but I'm going to play it again. COVID-19, better known as coronavirus, has spread throughout the world. Information about children with this disease is limited, but they are known to have had mild symptoms. Many organizations are responding accordingly, depending upon their area. It's best to stay home and away from others, especially when sick, and continue following healthy hand wash guidelines, covering mouth and nose and not touching your face or high-touch surfaces. Clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces regularly, and for more information, please visit cdc.gov forward slash COVID-19. Thank you. All right. Um, anyway, that was the PSA. Please, everyone, stay safe. Uh, I think that's going to do it for tonight. It looks like we've lost uh, a couple of streams anyway. I'm not really sure what's going on online. It looks like we've lost uh, the connection on a couple of the streams, if not all of them. Uh, I'm going to have to look over and see what's happening here. But uh, uh, if you're catching this on the replay, which you can, and I want to say Carl's joining us in the chat. It's good to see you, Carl. It's, it's great to see you. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. I hope your family's safe. Um, I want to uh, I want to uh, ask everyone to please don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Definitely don't drink and drive. <laughs> of course, I, not that anybody's going anywhere right now because we're all stuck at home. Do this in the comfort and safety of your home. But I, I appreciate you being here with me tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, next week, uh, I'm going to try to work out the kinks of what's ever, whatever's going on here. I don't know what's happening, but uh, I think uh, we've, we've lost uh, streams on most of these. Anyway, uh, I want to thank you for, for sticking out with me tonight. And I, I want to ask you to please stay at home and, until everybody says it's okay to go out and about. I know this is tough. This has been These are really, really tough times for all of us. I know it seems like I don't want to look like one of these celebrities that sit in the comfort of my home and drinking wine and complaining about what's going on. Um, I'm not like that at all. This is not what this is, this is about at all. 
we're all struggling through a lot of us are struggling some of the celebrities don't seem to be but a lot of the rest of us are struggling and uh, we are I mean yeah my wife and I work from home right now we've got our jobs but you know that that could turn on a dime that could change tomorrow and yeah we are kind of struggling too because we're, we're, we're feeling it just like everybody else there are a lot of things that we we can't do and we're worried about you know sometimes I don't sleep much uh, uh, well at night because thinking that oh man am I gonna have my job tomorrow uh, am I you know what's gonna happen uh, uh, tomorrow and so yeah I worry a, a lot about that and I worry for a lot of those people who are really really in dire straits so uh, you know I, I just I just hope we can get out of this soon I, I really I really do anyway I just want to thank you for being with me tonight and sticking out with me and uh, I want to, to ask that you please have a, a great week and have a safe week and um, so you can join me again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. Hopefully we'll be out of this soon. And uh, this will be just, the, the whole coronavirus thing will just be just a, a bad memory. <laughs> and maybe we can make the most of it in a good way. Maybe we can make the most of it in a good way. Uh, so, once again, thank you for being with me. Please, don't forget, uh, drinkwithrick.com. You can catch the... the uh, podcast at 10 p.m. Eastern. You can catch all of this. If the video cut out, and it looks like the video is kind of cut out for a lot of people, um, you can catch the rest of it here in the podcast at drinkwithrick.com on Monday nights at 10. You can also reach me at rick at savoyamedia.com. Thank you once again for being here tonight. Uh, I want to thank everyone, add me friend one who, who was in the chat, patient with me in the chat tonight. Uh, everyone watching on YouTube, I want to thank uh, let's see, Chris and my lovely wife Chi and Stephanie and Sherrod and Kathy and uh, Tim and Pete and Carl and everyone who joined me on the chat. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate each and every one of you. I really do. Um, here's to you. Once again, have a great week. Have a safe week. So you can join me here next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream, and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.